Thanks for being with us once again on the Moments That Matter after round 19 here in the Hungry Jacks NBL. We're starting to make a little more sense of what this whole end scenario is going to look like. And it became a little bit clearer today because of the Illawarra Hawks, Derek Rucker, who came to Kudos Bank Arena for the second time in a row and did a number on the Sydney Kings. They did, and it's so hard to believe. I'm incredulous at what I saw this afternoon, but full credit to the Illawarra Hawks and their head coach, Justin Tatum, who put together, devised a strategy several weeks ago and came in here on Christmas Day and executed it perfectly. But to come in here twice in a game of more importance, to get it done again, Jack, this is something that you rarely see in this competition. And the Hawks smack the Kings in the face to take possession of fourth place in the NBL going into round 20. Virtually led from the opening tip. Illawarra one of these teams, I feel like, Ruck, that you've got to see them live to appreciate what's going on here with this group. They are so organised at the defensive end. Everyone knows who they're guarding, where they need to be. Offensively, they understand their roles and where they all fit. Justin Tatum and what he has been able to engineer with this group, I mean, they're systematic in the way that they go about beating teams now. They are. And before you can instil any of that schematic stuff, uh, the X's and O's, you've got to get the buy-in. You've got to reach the guys' brains. You've got to reach the players' hearts. Then you get them to buy into what you're trying to do in terms of strategy. Justin Tatum obviously has done that effectively. He's now 11-6 and six since taking over yeah. the job from um, Jacob Jacobus. So if you look at it, that is an outstanding rate. 11, and 11 out of 17 games when half the league... Um, is well below the 500 mark. So when you're rating him now, he's up there, I say, in the top three or four coaches for coach of the year. And who knows where this team can go once they reach the finals. Well, this is the thing. They've, they've got to take care of business in the last round. They host Perth on Friday, and then they go to Melbourne to play a game that will mean absolutely nothing to Melbourne on Sunday. So two-part question. One, have you got them making the top six? I've got them in. It's just a matter of whether they're in the top four or not. Now, we know they play well against Perth, okay? So they've got Perth coming into town. I think they can handle Perth. And then they may go against a, a Melbourne United that's playing a roster that to protect maybe some of their star players going into the finals. We don't know how that's going to look. It very well could be that Illawarra win their final two games of the season, season and finish 15 and 13. So the second part to that question, they, in a world they could finish fourth. That's yes. very possible. How good is this team and how dangerous could they be in postseason? The fact that they can go on the road and win basketball games is significant. Not many teams are able to do that, especially in big occasions. Jack, they held their nerve here today. Yeah. When Sydney came back and we knew at some point Sydney were going to throw counter punches, but Illawarra didn't flinch. They held their nerve. They stayed with what had been working, and they just won a very professional game. In fact, we, it, was, it was very Melbourne United-like, what we saw them do today. Melbourne United did it in game one, and then Illawarra came out and did it in game two. What about the Sydney Kings? Um, I suppose we should start at the defensive end because that's been our discussion on mm. this show all season long, and again, they allowed a big number today. They haven't fixed it. Um, they've shown signs of being able to do it. They still have not been able to generate the requisite energy and effort. And now they find themselves in seventh place going into the final round of the season. I still want to side with talent and thinking that, you know, if they get in the finals, they can put it together because they have so much talent. Well, maybe I've overestimated their talent and they aren't that talented yes. and this is exactly who they are. They are a play-in team, a play-in contending team, and irrespective of where they finish in the finals, they're probably gonna be one and done. Yeah, they're, um, I feel like a loss like today, Ruck, might leave us with more questions than answers. But the thing I worry about, and we were just talking about this before we started, they set themselves to win today against a rival and didn't. Is there a concern that today's loss could really knock the stuffing out of them? Well, and you're probably alluding to the final game of the season. What's going to be the mindset as they go into Melbourne and play the Southeast Melbourne Phoenix, who are battered and bruised? We don't know what that lineup's going to look, look like. But how do the Kings approach that game? Are they done now? 
did this game suck all the life or whatever life that was left in their season? Has it crushed them? Can they lift themselves up, lift themselves up for one final run, win that game against the Phoenix, and then try and make some noise in the playoffs? It's a big ask, but it's going to require a lot of a lot of intestinal fortitude from that coaching staff and more importantly from the players. Let's head out west and talk about what we saw last night with the Cairns Taipans. Perth winning was the, the big story, and they've locked away top two. We'll get to the Wildcats in a second. That was... Uh, it's hard to reconcile what we saw last night with the Cairns Taipans and Adam Ford and Tajir McCall playing eight minutes. Now, there is no point downplaying this story. Mm. The, they are a story, the Cairns Taipans, and the relationship between Adam Ford and Tajir McCall. It is clear to everyone, including Stevie Wonder, that there is a problem between Adam Ford and Tajir McCall. Um, take us through what you saw last night and, and what your feelings are on it the next day. Yeah, well, I'll go back to 10 days or so when I was up courtside for the Cairns Taipans versus the Tasmania Jack Jumpers, and that was the first game where Tajir McCall came off the bench. And we kind of mentioned it early in the broadcast, and I asked around to see if Tajir was hurt. They said no. Everything is fine. Yep. That was my first indication that everything was not fine. Because yep. whenever they say everything's fine and a guy isn't hurt, there are other problems at play. Now, as we watched him in that game, his body language didn't look right. It didn't look like he was playing with the energy, the vibrancy that we usually see from Tajir McCall. Well, let's fast forward to last night. The body language was really, really bad. And now, there's little whispers coming out of possible incidents between McCall and Ford earlier last week. We don't know all the facts, but what has manifested is the floor has fallen out from the Cairns Taipans. Yeah. They look really, really bad. They fell apart in that second half last night out in Perth. And the energy in that team, there's some players that, that are really contributing to it, and McCall doesn't look like he's into it. Pat Miller doesn't look like he's playing with the same push that he was. Bull Qual, there was some frustration there with him and the coaching staff. Kerry Williams kind of like, I've had enough, I've had enough. Yeah, it was that one, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 So things don't look great. And it's crazy because only two weeks ago, they were still in the hunt for the playoffs. And ultimately, it comes down to institutional control. Who's in charge up there? Who's ensuring? that everybody is walking the line and maintaining the team ethos, whatever that may be. Happy to take Adam Ford at face value. Post game said that they wanted to look at some of the youngsters and, and have a look at some guys yeah. who are going to be there next year. That's fine, but, I mean, eight minutes is still eight minutes. That I, I don't remember seeing anything like what we saw last night. Well, Across all sports, to be well, honest. There was that passage of play with McCall where I believe he missed a few shots in a row. He was slow getting off the deck. They got punished on the other end by the Wildcats. And, and then he was brought out the game. And I don't think he returned no. to play after that play phase. Now, look, I get it about the future. Taron Armstrong is a talented local player who can be your point guard of the future. But giving him this much weight at this point of the season probably is masking some other issues and I would love to know what's going on up there. I'll be up there for their final home game of the season against Melbourne United. It'll be very interesting. Hopefully they've resolved some of the differences and everybody will kind of be back the status quo but let's see how it plays out. Are they going about it the right way? Oh that's a tough one. I got myself in trouble last year for questioning the Cairns Taipans and how they handle things but I'm not sure this is the right way because it hasn't resulted in wins. This is a results business, and usually whatever leads to wins is the right way to do things. New Zealand Breakers had a really good win on Friday over Illawarra, went to Melbourne today, came up pretty short. United had that game pretty much in control for the second half. What do we take away from this round from a New Zealand point of view? They did exactly what they had to do. They beat Illawarra. That's what they had to do. This game was like, you know, you can... You can play around a little bit, see if you're in the battle. You're playing with a little bit, a bit of house money. They know they just got to win one game next weekend yep. to qualify, and, and then they can make their next run at a pro possible championship. Have you got them making it? Yeah, I do. I think, I think Brisbane will have a tough time going over there and beating New Zealand. I don't think it's a bad matchup, however, for the Bullets. Mm. I think it's a really good matchup for Brisbane. Their size could give New Zealand problems given that Tyrell Harrison is available. So 
there are some really interesting ma uh, matchups in this final round of the season that are going to have direct, direct implications on how the playoffs shape out. Speaking of the Bullets, Friday night, they handled their business, Nathan Sobey, with a career-high 37 points. As you say, they did it without Tyrell Harrison. They just had to win Brisbane. They've got two games remaining as they started that one. Realistically, they've got to win both. They had to win. They handled the job, and they should get some credit for that. They should, and Nathan Sobey was outstanding. He came out right from the start and was knocking down jumpers. He was energized. He was getting in the paint. He was making plays, and I thought he really lifted everyone, and that's why it's so important to have that outstanding local player because he can lift the spirits of the whole team, drag teams to victories, and that's what the Bullets needed, and that was a must-win situation, mm. and it was good to see them perform better after the two pretty dud games that yeah. they have played in the lead up to in, in, in the lead up to that game so they've got a big one coming in New Zealand and uh, let's see how they respond oh, I can't wait for that one uh, Wildcats in Tasmania second and third that's now locked away again that's a term we're using a bit on this show this weekend but handled their business got wins and did it the right way Perth were outstanding in the second half I really loved how they uh, took care of cans and you know, John really, I think, has that team really focused. I'm a big believer in watching team timeouts, watching their huddles. How do they assemble as a group? Is there a leader? Is there a sub-leader, a co-captain type uh, presence there? And I think the Wildcats have a lot of those things covered, and they're going to be a real threat. I have them, I, I put them in the championship. They're going to be in the championship. I'm so, saying it right now. So Melbourne and Perth championship? <laughs> are we just fast-forwarding, or are we going to do this whole let's play just go, let's, just go, let's just go with Perth. Um, one round to go. Are you clear in your mind that John really is coach of the year? I think so. I think he's just a little bit ahead of Dean Vickerman, and that's no slight on Dean Vickerman. I think he is one of the, you know, five to seven greatest coaches in NBL history, and uh, it's, it's just been a great season for both those programs, Melbourne and Perth, and they're truly deserving of their positions atop the ladder. What about the Adelaide 36ers? So their season is over, but all of the talk right now, and even today when we walk mm. through the door here at Kudos Bank Arena, is around Brian Gorgian who spoke on Melbourne Radio, said that he declared a, a little bit of an interest in Adelaide and said that they're a great setup. Olgan Yulich reporting on Saturday that they met in Adelaide during the week and had talks. If you're the 36ers, Ruck, I'm putting you in charge of this franchise. Are you doing everything that you can do to make sure that Brian Gorgian is your coach next year? Well, it's a very nuanced situation. You have to somehow ensure that if you do hire Brian Gorgian, you take care of Scotty Nennis and everything that comes with Scotty Nennis in the Adelaide community. So it's imperative that the Sixers ownership group understand that yep. and handle that. Now, I'm offering Brian Gorgian five years. I'm not messing around. I'm giving him everything he wants because he is going to bring you a semifinals appearance every single year. You can bank that. He is going to pull really attractive, high-profile Australian talent to Adelaide. Adelaide traditionally has been an NBL powerhouse. They can return to that status if they hire Brian Gorgian. Five years. Five years. We don't see that often in this league, do we? We do not, but Brian Gorgian is the one person in this league that is worthy of that, and he's a guy that is going to pay you back in some form for every dollar you spend on him and more. And it's interesting, he hasn't even taken the job yet, but... There are a lot of names flying around, none worth going with at this stage because no. nothing's concrete. But it's amazing that effect that Brian Gorgian can have all of a sudden that he's in the mix to coach a team. And we're hearing names of Aussie players. We're hearing names of imports who have been in this league before that could potentially land in Adelaide. You, you could see this whole thing changing face very quickly if you're a 36ers fan. Well, that's the cachet of Brian Gorgian. He is going to pull so much with him. And when I say pull, I mean positive stuff. He's going to bring great players. He's going to uh, re-systemize everything you do to ensure that everything is professional and of championship magnitude. It's a thumbs up and thumbs down to finish off. Let's start and be positive. Who gets your thumbs up? I'm going to give my thumbs up to Keanu Pender. I yes. think he has gone under the radar this season. I have him in my all-NBL first team. I think he's been outstanding on both ends of the floor. His defensive presence, the fact that he plays an undersized five in this competition against much bigger men, 
He's also, Jack, and this is valuable, he's also learned to play with one of the greatest players in NBL history, which is never an easy feat. People think it's easy to go in there and work with a great player. It is not. So that's a, that's a shout out to Bryce as well and being a selfless superstar, but also Keanu Pender is one of, the, one of the true stars of our league and he deserves my thumbs up. My thumbs up goes to someone who wouldn't make the All-NBL first team, but if I was making an all-effort NBL first team, Will Hickey would be my All-NBL first team. Now, it's front of mind because we mm, just saw him yeah. today at Kudos Bank Arena, but he's getting more and more opportunities under Justin Tatum. He's taking them. He understands where he fits. He's not trying to do anything outside of his skill set. But if you want a loose ball dived on, he'll go and do it. You want someone locked away for a couple of minutes, he'll go and do it. And as this Illawarra team pushes towards postseason, he's now become an important player in that rotation. And that's the intelligence of Justin Tatum to understand what role this young man can play in lifting the prospects of your team. And it's right, it's been a it's been a nice, slow, gradual buildup for William Hickey. And today we saw him playing valuable minutes like he did the other night. And today it leads to a win. Thumbs down. Thumbs down. I'm going to go with two teams, Southeast Melbourne and Cairns. Institutional control has been lost. Things are falling apart. They need to get it together. Otherwise, there will be significant changes in both of those franchises. I'm also with the Phoenix. I sat in the crowd last night as a fan, bought a ticket, took my daughter along, and we sat high up in the stands, and I just watched. Um, it was great to see Mitch Creek and Alan Williams and Gary Brown up on the bench and trying to, to get yeah. something out of their group. They didn't sit there and sulk. But at the same time, it was pretty hard to watch what was going on. And then Mike Kelly got ejected, which I'm, I'm, I'm certain we've seen far worse across the season than what Mike Kelly may or may not have done. But th this has been a really, really tough finish to the season for the Phoenix. Really hard to watch. It has been, Jack, and you don't tell any lies there. And I went to the game last week in the throwdown, and that was really tough to watch also. And they're a program that's been plagued by misfortune and bad luck. And I don't know how you correct that. I don't know... I don't know what you do. Is it time just to detonate the whole place, clean it out, and try and see if we can restart and kind of change the luck in the program? But right now they have none and uh, a well-deserving double thumbs down. Something has to change for that franchise. That is us done for round 19. When we get back together at the end of round 20, the regular season will be done and we will know who's going to be in the play-in action and the playoffs. Normally we get a shock in the last round of the season. If there's a shock coming anywhere, where do you think it's coming from? That Brisbane-New Zealand game. I wouldn't be surprised. Now, I think New Zealand will beat them, but do not be surprised if Brisbane knocked them off because they have that one guy, Nathan Sobey, who can take over a game and win a game at any moment. I think if there's a shock, as good as they've been today, that Illawarra have got two very tough games, last two games of the season. So... There's a possibility they go 0-2 and, two and their fate hangs in the hands of others. We will just have to wait and see. Don't forget, the Ladder Predictor is live now on the NBL website. Play around with all of the combinations and spend as much time as we do trying to make sense of this whole thing. Thanks for watching and we will see you next week.